Are you thinking about giving Notion a try, maybe to get organized, track a project, or maybe even collaborate with others, but you are not quite sure where to start? Well, today I am talking all about how you can get started with Notion, and I'm going to share the things that I would recommend if you are just starting out, especially with that blank page, you're not really sure where you should start. And I'm going to actually show you a brand new sample account and show you hands-on what I would do. And if you have never seen me before and wondering who I am, my name is Kat and I help people to create professional and engaging online presentations. Now, when it comes to Notion, I know there are different cases. So maybe you downloaded it or signed up a while ago, haven't really done anything with it. Or maybe you grabbed someone else's Notion template and haven't really done anything with it or anything more than the template. Or maybe you haven't even signed up, but you are curious. <laughs> well, no matter what, I think this video can help you at least get those initial steps because it can be daunting to have a clean slate and not really sure what to do. So the first thing that I recommend before anything else is that you should collect your ideas. So creating one page that's just all about your ideas, anything that you think you might use Notion for, you want to write that down. And I would say even before you start to learn how to use it, capture your ideas. You can always add to it as you start to learn Notion and get ideas for what you can do next. So I have actually set up this blank sample account and I haven't even gone into it yet. This is what it looks like when you first sign in and it's gonna share with you, hey, we've got some templates. <laughs> so they have pre-set up some templates that can help you to get started. It can show you how it works, but we're gonna say, okay, we can leave them there. We can always delete it. And we're going to come back to this get started page. But first we are actually going to add our own page. And this is our ideas page. So let's call this ideas. It doesn't have to be uppercase. On a blank page, all you have to do is press enter and it's your blank canvas. So what you can do is actually just start writing ideas. So if I wanted to say capture a home project, there's something that I wanna work on, maybe I wanna capture that. That's an idea. Maybe you want to do some meal planning. That could be something you can use Notion for. Maybe you want to track some of your workouts. These are kind of more personal things. Perhaps you have some goals and maybe some milestones that you want to track. Or maybe you are creating content and you want to create a content calendar. And let's see what else. Maybe let's say you are taking a couple of online courses and you wanna actually track how you're doing and follow along with those courses. So this is literally a list. Now something you can do, anything that, when you see this little hand, you can click on it and you could say, you know what, I wanna turn this into a to-do list. And actually you can drag over and maybe turn them all into to-do lists so that if you go and you make that page, maybe you make a little page for your home project, then you can actually check that off. So that's what it looks like when you check it off. This can just be a way that you capture everything. Honestly, it doesn't matter how you set it up, <laughs> but the point is just write down any ideas that you have. If you see a video of how someone else uses their Notion, you think, oh, that could be cool. Just plop it in your ideas because this will be a home base for you to be able to just gather everything. And it doesn't even matter if you do everything on the list, you just want one place to capture all of those ideas. So that is my very first recommendation. Okay. This is what I recommend mostly because you probably have some ideas going in and before you start to actually learn how to use the tool and see different examples, I think it's a good idea just to get any of those ideas out of your head and start simple. You can also put down big ideas, but I think this is a good way to start. The second one is the get started page. I do actually find the get starting page in Notion to be a helpful one because it teaches you some of the main things you need to know and it's got some helpful resources. So if we go back into this space and we click on the getting started and I still have my getting started, it is still in my Notion workspace, it's hidden, but it's still in there so I can go back and reach it. So in this welcome to Notion page, they have little examples so you can start to play around with this page and it has some helpful videos. How do you create a page? How do you do some writing and editing? How do you start with a template if you wanna use one of the Notion templates that they have? And some basics on creating a database. So, and they have a link to their YouTube channel because they have a lot more content of all sorts of things. Once you kind of start digging, you'll realize how powerful Notion is, 
but this is a really good starting point. So I do recommend coming in here and checking it out. And you'll also see they have an example of a sub page and a sub page would be under here. If we toggle on that, you'll see that the sub page is embedded here on this side menu. Okay, what's the next thing? So now that you've got that get started, you spent a little bit of time learning some of those foundations. Now I think it's time to create a sandbox. Now I got this idea from Marie Poulin and a sandbox is really a place that you play. And I think this is a great idea. So if we go back into this space, let's add a page and we're gonna call this our sandbox. It's really just anywhere that you want to place things and play and so, in the sandbox, you could either start to build things directly on here. And now you'll see it added a little icon. <laughs> so you can go and you can pick whatever icon you want. If you wanna change it up, you can search. You can also upload your own icons. So if you want some custom ones, you can also link to an image and it will pull that into your icon. So for now, we're just gonna leave it <laughs> with this little bullseye. And in here, you have a couple of options. If you wanna play around, one of the things you can do is create a sub page so that all of these ideas are in your sandbox, but they're not all on this one page. So for example, if I wanted to show someone an example of a page, so one of the hints is that if you press this little slash, you'll see all the different basic building blocks. And if I say, I wanna create a sub page. So now in my sandbox, which is almost blocked by my head, <laughs> you can see there's a sub page and it's untitled. So maybe this sub page is just testing databases. Oop, there we go, databases, databases, however you say it. So this might be an example of something that you play around with. And then you can see on here, you can have an empty page or you could just make this entire thing a database. In this case, I'm just going to start creating one. But before we do that, I'm going to go to my next tip. So once you've got a sandbox, then I want you to actually play around and create a database. So this is my next tip. Do one thing maybe from your ideas list or maybe try and mirror what someone else has done. Now in this case, let's do an example of your online courses. So let's actually change this and we're going to call this online course tracking. Let's say I am in two online courses right now and there are lessons for them. So one of the things that you want to think about when it comes to how you're going to organize your information is what things have common properties. So they have something in common. For example, a lesson is a lesson regardless of which course I'm taking it in. I'm probably going to write down the lesson, I'll probably write down which course it's for. And then I'm also likely going to take some notes maybe some action or follow-up, but no matter what, they're all kind of the same. So you could put all of your lesson notes in one table or one database, and then you can organize them or sort them using different features. So let's give an example. So I'm going to do a little slash and I actually just start to type the word database and you'll actually see now that all the different options for databases come up. I'm going to just create an inline table, which means this table is going to appear on this page. And let's call this one lessons. And so here we're going to have all of my lessons for my courses. So we're just gonna keep it simple. We're gonna have lesson one, we're going to have lesson two, lesson three, and then maybe we have the other course refers to them as weeks, week one, week two, week three, and maybe this one has week four. So now we've got the name of these and you could actually list the name of the lesson if you want in this name column. I think that's a smart idea, but whatever, whatever you choose. And then we have another sample column. So this is set up as what we call multi-select, meaning you could have a couple of different tags and you can have more than one tag in that column. So what I'm going to do is change the property type. So first I'm gonna rename this. So I'm going to name this course. And here I'm going to change it to select, meaning you can only select one option. So in this case, I'm going to add the option of course A. And all of these belong to course A. And then all the weak ones belong to course B. 
So I'm going to create that option. And then course B, course B, course B. So now what we have are as a way to divide this information. And then the other thing is maybe I just want to have a notes column. So I'm going to call it notes and this is a text. And here we have another column. So let's just keep it super simple. With this, we can now organize this information so that maybe you only see one course at a time. If you're tracking your, your progress in a course, you wanna be able to maybe just look at that course. So this is where you could either simply use a filter and say, okay, right now, I just wanna see anything where the course is course A. Now I've just filtered it and I can see this. But then you've kind of lost all the other ones and you have to go back to this filter every time and change it. That is an option, or you can do something else, which is to play around with views. So let's actually delete this sorting and we're going to add a view. And maybe I want to add a view where I can actually see them divided into their different courses. So let's actually try a board. So a Kanban board, and we're going to call this by course where I can see all of the lessons by course. So let's create that here. There's no course assigned. We can just hide that column. So now you can see we've got all the lessons from course A, all the lessons from course B in one place, but they're a little bit more organized. So that's one option. Really what you're doing right now is playing around with how you see the information. In this case, you might think those are out of order. So you can actually add a sort and get used to the different features for the databases. So here I would wanna say, yeah, let's put the names in ascending order. And then now you can see lesson one, two, three, week one, two, three, four. So now they're a lot more organized. I'm not going to get too much into how you can do this, but I will show you a couple other things. Let's say on this course tracking, you want to have another view where it is just one course. So let's take a look at another view and actually let's call this course A. We would of course, we would of course name it what we want. Let's look at a list view, which is just a simpler look and let's create that. So now it's called the course A, but we can see all the information for course A and B. And this is where you would add a filter and you would say, okay, I want only where the course is course A. And we can also add the sort so that they're in order. There we go. So now we have this and a, a list is just a simpler view that you can have. Now let's create another one and we're going to call this course B. And we can also make this in a list and we'll create that. And then again, we want to go and add the filter so that we are only seeing what we want to see, which is now course B. So this is a really simple example of how you can start to play around with some databases and just see how you can organize your information. And the main reason I am spending time showing you this is that there's a lesson to be learned around how you organize your information because some people might be tempted to make a separate database for every single course and track all those lessons. And you can do that, but you don't have to. So anything that is similar in its properties, you can have together and then you can use the tools so that you can sort this, organize it and see exactly how you want to see it. Now, the other thing you can start to do if we go back to our default view is you could add something like a date. So maybe there are some assignments that are due or a deadline. You can go and pick a date and then you can actually start to organize this in a calendar view. So if I say this is going to be on the 18th, this one's going to be on the 26th and maybe this one is going to be in March and these ones are going to be on these dates here. Just picking some random dates. Um, okay, so now we have a bunch of dates. The other option, which you may have seen, is that you can have a calendar. So we can add a view where maybe we call this due dates and we select calendar and then we select create. So now you can actually see when all of those are due on this calendar format. And that might be a nice way for you to see your information. And if a due date changes, you can always change it. Yeah, like maybe lesson three is actually on another date. So this is just another way you can see your information. So you can start to see how you can customize all of this information and you can even filter this if you only want to see one course at a time. So that is one of the, the next things that I would do is just to play around with something you know you're going to use. Now, what is the next thing that I recommend? 
This is to now try creating a related database, meaning let's have them talk to one another. So if we go back to this online course and we'll just go into our default view, now let's actually add another table. So we are going to say, start to type database and you'll see all the options. And here, maybe let's try a gallery because we haven't done a gallery yet. We're going to create, so this is another database. It's another table. Just like this one, we can add the different views. Except this one has little windows, op it's optional. And maybe this one is actually our courses. So we want our courses. Now you're going to see some information. We can open each item and say, well, I don't want this on here. I'm just going to delete that. Here, it gives you a created tag. If you don't want the created tag, you can just get rid of that. So you could delete that property. And maybe you want to have a tag of type. And this could be an example of you are taking a self-paced course. So that might be an option. Maybe it's also um, a type that has assignments. I'm just making these up. <laughs> but you can have different tags so that you can tag all of your courses. And then you can also add, let's say we add a cover. And the nice thing about Notion is that it does have some covers already built in that you can choose from, whether you just wanna choose maybe a color that you'd like to have in the background. You can upload a photo, you can link to a photo, and you can also go into Unsplash. So maybe this course has to do with music. I just click on this picture here, and now I've got this cover. The other things you can do for properties, maybe you wanna capture the cost of how much you paid for this course. You can make that a number. So maybe this course was $199. Um, you can add, maybe you wanna have a link. And so this link, we wanna have a URL. And so this can actually take us exactly to the page where we can sign in and do our lessons. You can keep on going. And what we are going to do now, so we've got this, let's call this, course A, there we go. Okay, so we've got course A and you, the cover is not showing up. So you can actually change that. If you go over here and you click on properties, you can say the little preview instead of content is gonna be the page cover. And so now you can actually see the cover that we assigned to this course. So let's open this one. So this will be course B and we have the same types as before because remember these are all in the same database. So maybe this one also has assignments but maybe it's not self-paced. So maybe this one has live classes and now we've added that. Maybe this class was $300 and then we can add the link. Let's add a little cover to this one. So let's change that cover and we'll go to Unsplash and this one's about hot dog appreciation. All right, so we have now picked our little covers. We can see that this one, we don't actually, we're not in three courses, so we can delete. Maybe though there's a course that's upcoming and you don't have all the details yet, you could add that here. So this is an option where you can see these different things. So now you have two different tables. So how do we relate them? You have two options. You can go to the lessons or you can go to the courses because as soon as you relate these two databases, they're gonna show up in one another. So let's just open course A and we wanna add a property. And this time, so let's, we'll call this lessons because we're gonna link it to our lessons. And under text, we're going to go into advanced. And under advanced, we're creating a relation. So we're going to reference another table. And now we select it. So this one, there are some, you can see that there are examples of the templates, but I'm going to pick lessons. If you can't see it, you can search for it. So let's create that relationship. So now we have lessons and you'll see a little arrow, which means it is information that's being pulled from somewhere else. So when we click on this, we're actually going to see all of the lessons available. And so we know this is course A, so we can actually just simply click on all of the lessons that are associated with course A. Now we actually can see them all showing up here. And when you close this, you'll see now in the lessons, there is a corresponding column called related to courses. And all the courses that we linked already are showing up. Now you can actually change this. So maybe I just want this to be called courses, not related to courses. 
and it's already set up. And so in this example, if we're in this table, if we click here, we can actually say, okay, this is actually connected to course B. So let's look for course B. <laughs> course B is being slow. Let's go this way. And under our lessons, we want to get lesson course B and we click on all of the ones associated with course B. Sometimes it's slow to find things occasionally, but apparently they're working on it. So now we can see all of the lessons are in course B and they show up in this table. So this is a way that you can see all of the relationships and you could actually sort like, so having the select where you have the two different options is really nice because this allows you to have the board view, for example, this by course, but you also could use the information in a relationship and you could filter or sort using a relationship. So if I said, let's create a new view, we'll keep it as a table and we'll just say view, view B. <laughs> and in view B, I want to sort this. I can filter and my filter can be where the course contains and this is where you can pick A or B. So this is just another alternative for how you can organize your information. But I would say if you ever want to have the board view, like what we've set up here for the course, you wanna be able to have those tags and be able to organize them in that way. So that is the next thing that I would recommend is try relating two tables and see how they can connect. And ultimately you wanna make sure that in each database, the, the information has common properties. So they have something in common and then you can start to sort and organize them. Okay, finally, make it your own. This is the next thing that I would do with if you are starting out. So really making it your own is all about adding your own look and feel. So whether that is to add little icons, like maybe having custom icons that you choose and that you want to upload, that can be something that you do. You can also start to add your own covers to these. So every page can have a cover similar to every item in a database. So maybe I want to have a certain color or aesthetic. You can also upload things. I really like to make images in Canva and then I can have those there. If you don't like the icon, you can always remove it. And really it's about figuring out what works for you. The other thing would be learning how to use columns and really just making it your own. You can also change to dark mode and instead of having the light, you can have the dark. So really you want to just make it the way that you like. Also up in the top right, you can change some things like, do you want this to be smaller text? Do you want this to be full width? If you have a lot of information, that could be nice. You can also change the different fonts. So maybe you prefer a serif font or the mono font. So play around and see what do you like. And yes, there are only a few styles and there are some people online who have tricks for getting their own fonts or you can even bring in images if you wanna add those as headings. But really this is just a way to have fun, play around, figure out what it is that you like and then get started really. Now, I have one last thing that I want to share and that is this idea that you should really start simple don't make it complicated. There are things that you will see people doing with Notion that might look really amazing, but it might not be a good fit for you. And that's okay. I mean, there are people who do daily journals. I've personally chosen not to do a daily journal. I do a daily check-in. I do my gratitude in the morning. I track if I've moved my body that day. And I've started tracking if I'm taking my supplements and doing a meditation, because those are things that I've identified that I wanna make sure that I'm paying attention to. So when I see them in my notion every day, I make sure I do them, but that's the extent of it. I personally don't have a daily journal. Maybe I'll do one in the future, but right now I don't need that. So don't add things that you don't need to add. Start with what you actually need. And I think that is how you'll get off on the right foot when it comes to getting started with notion. If you found this helpful and you're interested in more, please like this video and subscribe. I will be doing a few more Notion uh, updates and videos, which is a little different than my usual content, but I really do love Notion. So there's going to be a little bit more on this channel. Until next time, I'll see you later.